the bell icon to turn on notifications. In the last lesson, we started to take a look at the sum function. And as I said, the sum function is by far the most popular function in Excel and one you'll find yourself using all the time. And all the sum function does is it takes a range of numbers and it will add them together. And as you get into more complex formulas, you can use the sum function for many different things and combine it with other functions to make it really powerful. Well, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves at this stage, but let's delve into the sum function in a little bit more detail. Now, once again, we have a very basic spreadsheet here. We have some years running across the top and some months of the year. And then we just have some random numbers here, possibly sales figures, something along those lines. And what we want to do is we basically want to complete the total for each of the different years. Now, as we've already seen, we can simply click in the cell, type in equals. And as we start to type in the word sum, it's going to come up in the list below. We can press tab to put that first bracket in. And then all we need to do is select the list of numbers that we want to add up. In this case, C3 to C14. Close off the bracket and hit enter to get our result. Once again, we have that little green triangle in the corner, and I'll explain what that is in a couple of moments. Now, there are other ways that we can perform this sum function. Now, it might be that when you're first starting to learn formulas, you don't particularly like typing functions directly into the cell. And I know that a lot of people who are new to Excel prefer to use the functions dialog box to construct their formulas. So let me just show you what that is, and then you can decide for yourself which method you prefer. So instead of typing equals sum into this cell, what I could do is jump up to this little FX button. And you'll notice here it says insert function. It's also worth noting that we have this button on the formulas tab as well. It's this one just here with the keyboard shortcut of shift F3. So when we click this, it's going to open up the insert function dialog box. And this is a really nice method to use if you're not entirely sure what the function name is that you need to use. You can see at the top here, you can search for any function available in Excel, or you can browse through the different categories of functions. Now I'm gonna select all just here, because what I could do is I could type a brief description of what I want to do. So maybe if I just type in add numbers and click on go, it's going to pull up all of the functions that will help me do that. And I can see that one of them in there is the sum function. Now I can double click to select this and it's basically going to open my function arguments. Now remember when we're typing the function into the cell, these function arguments appear in that little screen tip underneath where we're typing. And this is basically exactly the same. It's just saying provide the numbers that you want me to add together. And you can see here it's made a good guess based on where I'm clicked as to the numbers that I want to add up D2 to D14. And if I check my spreadsheet, that's not quite correct because D2 is actually a date. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove those numbers and make my selection again, which is D3 to D14. Notice it puts the formula in the cell for me, click on OK, and then I get my result. So that's another method you can use, not only with the sum function, but with any function that you're using in Excel, the functions dialog box. Now, another way that we can very quickly add up numbers is to use the auto sum button. Now, auto sum, you're going to find on the formulas tab in the functions library group. And this is one of those double sided buttons. So I can click the top half or I can click the lower half. Now, if I click the lower half, it's going to show me the different functions that I can use auto sum with. So I can use it for other functions aside from sum. However, the default action for the auto sum button is to use the sum function. So that means I can just click the top half of this button. So if I do that, notice what happens. Again, it tries to select the data that it thinks I want to add up. And most of the time, this selection is fairly accurate. 
But again, if I look at my data, I can see that within this range that it's selected, it's also including the column heading because effectively the column heading is also a number. Now what I could do in this scenario is I can simply adjust my range. Notice I have these marching ants around the outside and in the corner there I have these little blue squares. As I hover my mouse over it allows me to adjust the selection. So I'm going to move it down one cell and then I can simply hit enter to complete my sum formula. And an even quicker way of invoking auto sum is to use the keyboard shortcut which you can see there is alt plus equals. Now again, if I do Alt plus equals, it's going to make the cell selection, but for this example, I need to readjust that cell selection so it doesn't include the date, and hit Enter. So a few different methods that we can use there to quickly input a sum formula. Now the final thing I want to talk about here are these little green triangles in the corner of each of these total cells. What are they and why are they there? If you see a green triangle, this is some kind of warning. And warnings are always worth checking into further so you can determine if this is actually an error that needs to be fixed or if it's something inconsequential. Now, when I click on a cell that has one of these green triangles, notice that I get a little icon next to it, which is a little warning icon. And if we click this, this is kind of going to give you an idea as to what the problem is. So I can see here at the top of the list, it says formula emits adjacent cells. So what this is basically telling me is that in this sum formula, and if we look in the formula bar, C3 to C14, it says it's found other data nearby that I haven't included in my formula. And that would be correct because I have these dates at the top here, which are effectively numbers to Excel, but to me, they're dates and I don't want them included in the formula. So that is what this error is referring to. It's basically saying, hey, you've missed out a number in cell C2. Do you want to correct this before you go on? Now, I know that these years are not supposed to be included in these formulas. So what I can safely do here is select all of the cells where I have this little warning, click the drop down and just say ignore error to get rid of them. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.